Ready to go, Lois? Boy, you sure like to say my name, yeah. don't you? Excuse me, Lois. Stand back, Lois. Jimmy's in trouble, Lois. <laughs> oh, Mr. Meyer, this is my friend, Jerry. Jerry Seinfeld. Duncan Meyer. You two know each other? Yeah. We uh, went to high school together, didn't we, yeah, Jerry? Yeah. Gee, I hope you're not leaving now. We still have a lot of work left to do. Would you be able to come all the way downtown again in rush hour and pick me up? Well, I'd have to be Superman to do that, Lois. No. No, no, no. This is all wrong. Where's the chicken cashew? You no order chicken cashew. No, I, I didn't order any of this. I'm not paying for this. Fine, Bennis. We're putting you on our list. What list? The do not deliver list. Merry Christmas to you. Well, I guess we'll just go out. Yeah. What are you doing with the Daily Worker? Your net must have left it here. Your boyfriend reads the Daily Worker? What, is he a communist? He reads everything, you know. Ned's very well read. Maybe he's just very well read. A communist? Don't you think he probably would have told me? Well, does he wear bland, drab, olive-colored clothing? Yes. Yes, he does dress a little drab. <laughs> He's a communist. Oh. Hey, look at this. Exciting, uninhibited woman <laughs> seeks forward-thinking comrade. Appearance not important. <laughs> Appearance not important. This is unbelievable. Finally, this is an ideology I can embrace. <laughs> Hey, up. Hey, hey, where's Lois? She couldn't make it. You know, I can't believe you're really going out with a woman named Lois. I know, finally. <laughs> but George, guess who her boss is? Duncan Meyer. Duncan Meyer? Who's he? Elaine, only one other person in the world knows what I'm about to tell you, and that's George. When we were in the ninth grade, they had us all line up at one end of the schoolyard for this big race to see who was going to represent the school in this track meet. Mm -hmm. I was the last one on the end. George was next to me, and Mr. Bevelock with the gym. What's that? Mr. Bevelock with the gym teacher. Oh, of course. He was down at the other end. So he yells out, ready, on your mark, get set. And I was so keyed up, I just took off. <laughs> By the time he said go, I was 10 yards ahead of everybody. No. Yes. I looked up, I couldn't believe it. When the time the race was over and I had won, I was shocked. Nobody had noticed the head start. Really? Yes, and I had won by so much, a myth began to grow about my speed. <laughs> Only Duncan suspected something was amiss. He's hated me ever since. And now he's back. Well, what happened when you raced him again? I never did. In four years of high school, I would never race anyone again. Not even to the end of the block or to catch a bus. And so the legend grew. Everyone wanted me to race. They begged me. The track coach called my parents, pleading, telling them that it was a sin for me to waste my God-given talent. But I answered him in the same way I answered everyone. I choose not to run. So now Duncan is back. He's back. As I knew he would be someday. <laughs> Man, that's some tart cider. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Sorry I missed the Chinese food. Oh, so am I. How's, uh, Duncan? He's okay. You say anything? About what? Oh, nothing in particular. Why did you cheat in that race? I did not cheat! He said that you got a head start. Oh, he's just jealous because he came in second. Really? Yeah. So you were the fastest kid in school. Faster than a speeding bullet, Lois. <laughs>